Hello there, everybody. Taco here. Today we're going to be learning how to make uh, an engine that lets us buy items, and the items we buy are going to cost an amount, and it's going to subtract that amount from our total gold and uh, display the items we buy on screen. So we're going to go ahead and first things first, click new. All right. So uh, the first thing I want to do is insert an object. Now, in most games, you would get currency through, you know, grabbing coins or whatnot. Uh, I'm just going to do this by letting you press a button. So we're going to call this button underscore gold. I got a piece of art for this. And there it is. It's a coin. So what we're going to do is let you click on this and we're going to give you a gold value or add to a gold value. <clears throat> um, now, you, you would probably want to save your gold value or your currency uh, under a global value because global values can be shared between frames and you probably want your currency shared between frames. You could also save it and load it from a, a file. A save file, but this is this is probably easier. You could also save it to a variable on a global value. I mean, sorry, on a global object that would also be uh, again global and can be exchanged through uh, frames. <clears throat> so we need to have a glo a gold value. So we're going to make it a global value. So I'm adding a new one, and I'm going to call this gold. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say when the player clicks with the mouse on an object. And that object is this gold is this uh, gold piece here. We are going to change a global value. We're going to click Add to and select Gold, but that's the only global value we have. So yeah, just select that one, and we're going to say 50. Okay. Now we need to display our gold, so we're going to do that through a counter. So go ahead and add a counter, and I'm going to call this counter underscore gold. Uh, I'm going to resize it just a tad so it's easier to see. And we're going to need to set this to the value of our gold amount. So add an always event and under the counter, select set counter. And we are going to <clears throat> click on the special object and retrieve a global value. And we're going to grab the value of gold. So uh, if this has worked properly, which I'm sure it has, this will increase that counter as we click on this. Yep, we're adding 50 every time we click because that's the amount I set. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw a backdrop in here just, just to make it look a little better. I'm going to import some text that says gold, and shrink it down, and throw it on top of that so we know that that is the gold amount. All right, boom. Let's make that a little smaller. Okay, <clears throat> so um, the items we have here to purchase are going to be some items that we're going to put on a face. <laughs> And when you don't have the items, um, you're not going to see them. And whenever you do have them, they're going to become visible. So I'm going to insert an active object. This is going to be the dude's face. I'm just going to call this face. I'm going to import this from some art I have. Um, we're just going to uh, import the other items real quick. Okay, um, this one is going to be the hat. So let's throw that on top of his head where we want it. Let's name that hat. We're going to insert the monocle, and that's called monocle. And then we're going to insert the ears. We got some ears. He's currently earless, and then he gets some ears. Uh, insert object, active ears. We're going to call these ears. Change them to become the art for the ears. And then we're going to resize these because these ears are freaking huge. All right. Still too big. And I'm going to throw these ears to the back so they're behind the face. It'll look better. <clears throat> Order to back. Move the hat up a bit. All right, there we go. That's our dude. It's kind of silly looking guy. Now, the first thing we want to do, um, like I said, we don't want to see these when we don't have them. So we're going to get rid of visible at start. And 
and that's going to be how we determine whether or not we have the objects. Um, probably a better thing to do would actually be make them uh, into a global value, like a global value hat or monocle or ears. And if they were one, the value is one, then you have it. If it's zero, you do not. Um, but just for simplicity's sake, we are just going to make them visible and invisible. That's how we're going to show whether or not we've purchased it. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to insert another object, and this is the uh, button that lets us select the item we're going to buy. Okay, so the first thing we're going to import here is going to be the top hat purchase button. Now this one is going to be the parent object that I was talking about. Um, so what that means is we're going to give this some values, and then we're going to copy this and we'll have those values in place for the other objects. So uh, we need to give it uh, the value of price. And then we're going to have a value called ID. And then we're going to have a value called has. Um, we also want to add a qualifier to this, just so we can, instead of addressing each object separately, we can ask about the object type. Um, we're just going to, it doesn't matter. These are all the, really, these are just names with an icon they really don't matter so it could be any of these but we're just going to call it collectibles okay <clears throat> uh let me make sure everything's right here all right let me name this uh button hat now we're gonna name it buy hat because this is the button you press to buy the hat now we're going to clone this object i'm going to import some art this is going to be the buy ears Freaking huge, gotta resize it on down, throw it over here, and we wanna rename it. But because we copied that object, it is gonna have all the values we had before too. It's like uh, all the, uh, yeah, the alterable values, price, ID, and has. And it should also be uh, the qualifier of uh, collectible. All right, so this is by underscore ears. Let's clone it again. And this is going to be our monocle. By monocle. I need to resize it. All right. Boom. Snazzy monocle. And this is going to be named by monocle. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to need some global values. All right. So we currently have the gold value. We're going to have this one called current underscore price. And this is going to be the value we're going to grab and fill in for the current price of the object that we have clicked last. We also need current um, ID and current underscore has. Okay. All right. Let's plug in some values for these. The price of the hat, we're going to make 100. Price of the ears is going to be 150. And the price of this Nazi monocle, we're going to make to be 200. Uh, then you also need IDs, so it doesn't really matter as long as they're not the same number. Uh, you just need to know what ID represent, represents what object. So ID 1 is going to be our hat. ID 2 is going to be the ears. And ID 3 is going to be our snazzy monocle. Okay, <clears throat> so let's uh, do some stuff. Alright, so always set the counter to gold. We actually need to add another counter. Sorry. So go ahead and throw another counter in here, and this counter is going to represent the price of uh, the current object, okay? We're gonna call this counter price. Counter underscore price. Okay, so back in our always event, we want to set this counter to be the value, the, uh, the global value of current price, okay? So, <clears throat> we need to then make sure that we can uh, change that current value. We're gonna have to change some current values depending on what we click on. Now, because these three objects all share the exact same qualifier, we can just ask about the qualifier and not the objects themselves. That'll make it a lot easier. So we'll say, uh, if the mouse user clicks on an object and that object is the collectible, then we're gonna change the global value of current price to be, and we're gonna grab a value from the collectible um, group, right? And we're gonna grab the value of price, okay? Now we're also gonna set the global value of 
uh, current ID to, again, we're gonna grab it from collectibles and we're gonna get the value of ID. And we're gonna get the value, or sorry, set the global value of current has to the value of has from our uh, collectible. All right, so if we do this properly, this will show us the proper price when we click on on uh, the object. So 200 for the monocle, 150 for the ears, 100 for the top hat. We need an object that lets you buy these things. So we're gonna insert an active object called uh, buy button. Gonna import some art for it. All right. Throw it over here. Perfect. So what we want is when you click on this button, it is going to buy the item we have selected. So, um, user clicks on an object, and that object is the buy button. Okay. We want to make sure that we have the money to buy the object that we're trying to buy. So we're going to find out if the global value of gold is greater or equal to the global value current price. Because if you remember, we set the current price to be uh, of what we clicked on last to be uh, this value. Okay. Um, now we want to make sure that you you can't buy this if you already have it. So we're going to compare it to the global value of has. And we're gonna make sure current has equals zero. We're gonna set this to one after we purchase items. <clears throat> and then um, we're gonna do something, this might not make a lot of sense, but we're, this is essentially uh, changing, it's, it's lining up the IDs to make sure that uh, the right has gets checked. Um, just do it as I do it. You need to make sure that you check the group collectibles to make sure that the, you'll see. Do it in this order, all right? So uh, you wanna find out if the alterable value from the group collectible ID is equal to the global value current ID, okay? If you do it backwards, it might not work. Um, even though this is technically an equal statement, it, should, it seems like you could have them on either side, you can't. Okay, so what, what happens here? Well, we've clicked on the button. Uh, we have more gold than the current price. We uh, currently do not have the item and we've checked to make sure the IDs line up. So then we need to do a few things. We need to subtract the current price from the value of gold, <clears throat> thereby taking that money away. Um, we need to set has to one, meaning we now have that. Um, and then we're going to destroy this group collectibles. Now that's not gonna destroy the entire group, that's just going to destroy the one that's currently selected. That's why we did this. This made sure that the right has gets placed and that the right one's gonna get destroyed, okay? IDs are kind of a pain to deal with, but they make sure that the right objects are getting pointed to when you have groups um, group set up, okay? so. All we need to do now is uh, make the objects visible that we have bought. So we're gonna ask uh, if the buy hat, if the value of buy hat um, has equals one, then we are going to make the hat visible. Where's the hat? There it is. <clears throat> Visibility, make object reappear. And we're gonna do this for the two for the other two objects as well. So we're gonna say is uh, by ears, ultra value of has equals one. If it does equal one, then we want the ears to become visible. So do that. Oops. Yeah, reappear. Uh, and we need to do it lastly for the monocle. Uh, ultra value compare to has. If has equals one, then make the monocle reappear. Okay, so assuming we didn't break something, this should work. I'm actually gonna change the background color because I don't like that current background color. I'm gonna make it like a nice little blue. All right, so let's give this a shot. So we can get the gold. 
let's see what happens if we click on the top hat. All right, so we have the top hat. Now I should be able to buy the top hat. If I click this and it works, this top hat will go away. He'll get a top hat on his head. That worked. All right, the value is of gold. Wait, we still have gold. We didn't spend the gold, so let's find out why that, that did not happen. <clears throat> We did this backwards. We subtracted gold from current price. We need to subtract current price from gold. So, sorry about that. Uh, do it again. Change global value. Subtract current price from the value of gold. We were subtracting the gold from the current value. So that was stupid. All right, let's do this again. <clears throat> let's see what happens if I just click on an item and try to buy it. Can't do that. So you can't buy an item unless you have enough enough money. So let's get the money for the hat. Let's buy the top hat. Boom, got the top hat. Um, I still have the gold. What? I did it again. Subtract gold from current price. What am I doing? <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. Change the global value. Set. No. Change the global value. Subtract from. Subtract from gold. Wait, are these are these backwards? So choose value gold. Am I subtracting gold from current price or current price from gold? Okay, current price from the value of gold. Right? Doesn't that make sense? Not zero gold, gold. Subtract gold. No, that's backwards. That doesn't seem right to me. All right, sorry. <clears throat> okay, subtracting gold from current price, which is apparently subtracting current price from gold. Subtract current price. Okay, now it'll work. Uh, anyway, get our get our gold amount. Click the top hat. Buy. Bam. Top hat. Money is now gone. So if we click on here, we can't buy the ears until we get the money for it. So we'll click on that. One fifty. We'll go over two hundred. Bam. Now it's got some goofy ears. And lastly, we need two hundred for our monocle. Boom. We got a monocle. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you have a simple. Uh, purchasing system. Uh, hopefully this made sense. If it didn't, ask me some questions. I'll do my best to help you guys out. Uh, stuff like this though, honestly guys, it's best to just play around with it. And it sounds like my neighbor's dogs are killing each other upstairs. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoy this and uh, you all have yourselves a fantastic evening.